Most of the 3D printers you see on YouTube these days are like <laughs> And I'm like Whilst my brushes are like Let's see what we can do about it. Hi fellas! Today we will try to optimize print profiles. To be exact, we want to speed up the 3D prints profile for Lightweight PLA. Let's have a look at the default settings. In the tab Print Settings, we have a layer height of 0.25mm which is fine for Lightweight PLA. It reduces print time already a lot and due to the fact that Lightweight PLA expands, it's absolutely fine to use it with a 0.4 nozzle. We normally print with one parameter for most 3D prints planes and three top and bottom layers. Please note that the parameter generator should be switched to classic. This feature is new in the latest version of Prusa Slicer and toggled to Arachne as a default which can cause problems, so change it to classic. Choose 0% infill for wing parts and 5mm for brim width. This is the tab we want to tune today. We normally print lightweight PLA very slow with 25mm per second for external perimeters. For our first calibration steps, this will be our benchmark, because we will first measure the outcome of the external perimeters and then dial in the other settings. In the advanced tab, we can tune the extrusion width. Most 3D prints models are designed for 0.45 walls. Only a few need 0.42, but if you simply stick to the corresponding manual of the plane, you will be perfectly fine. In the filament settings, we see that we need to use a low extrusion multiplier because of the expanding properties of the lightweight PLA. Make sure to calibrate your printer using the tutorial from ColorFab before tuning speed settings. Note that the temperature is very important. The higher the temperature, the more material expands, the less extrusion multiplier is needed. The higher the print speed, the less time the filament spends in the hot end and therefore needs a higher temperature to expand the same amount as with lower print speed. For cooling settings, I learned that you want to decrease it a lot, but don't turn it off completely, otherwise bridging will be completely failed. Don't forget to turn off retraction in the filament overrides or you will ris risk a clog. Let's create a simple box in the slicer to test extrusion width with different speed settings. I removed top layers as we don't need them in this case and afterwards change the external perimeter speed to the desired values. In the first step, only external perimeters are important for us, as they will serve as a base for the other speeds afterwards. I slice the cube with 10 mm per second, increase steps and print the test cubes to measure the wall thickness. As expected, the walls came out thinner as speed increased. They measured. Zero point forty five at twenty five mil per second, zero point forty six ish at thirty five mil per second, zero point forty four at forty five mil per second, zero point forty two at fifty five mil per second, zero point forty five at sixty five mil per second, and zero point forty four at seventy five mil per second. For the last two specimen, I increased the extrusion multiplier to zero point forty nine, which worked fine. The default value was 0.46. So we now have an idea of what happens when we just increase print speed. The walls get thinner as the filament spends less time in the hot end and therefore can't expand to the maximum. To bring the experiment to a bigger, more realistic scale, I took one of my current wing designs and printed specimen with the different settings. This step is absolutely important as not only the plane number of measured wall thickness is important, but also the consistency during printing. 
the pressure in the nozzle varies during print moves and so we have to tune our profile in real life situations just as they appeared during printing wing parts. I first printed the part with my default lightweight PLA profile and it came out quite a lot too thin. The average wall thickness, which I measure on six different points of the airfoil, was only 0.4 mm when it should have been 0.45 mm. I guess that's due to a slight change in Colorfab's Lightweight PLA, which I noticed a few months before Lightweight PLA HT hit the market. It seemed that the filament doesn't expand as much anymore and I don't know if anyone else recognized, but I did, as I used cheat codes to print the same parts on and on. Anyways, I used this recognition to improve the profile step by step and here you can see how it turned out. I had to increase the temperature by 3 degrees Celsius and pump up the flow to 0.55 which also m means a bit of weight increase, but I guess that's the sacrifice you have to make for good solid wing parts. Finally, I decided to do a further test print with a wing part that has more sea height, because experience shows that the prints start to fail more likely on the upper parts of the sea axis. I took a wing segment of my 3D printable DLG design Argon for this and put it into the slicer to see how it prints with the sped up profile. The print came out quite well and I was confident I found a good compromise between speed and quality. But then I checked the print time estimation compared to my old profile. It showed only 3 minutes of save time, which was not the groundbreaking step forward I was hoping for. So I tried a wing part from my current wing project, Z2, and let the slicer calculate the print time. This was what I was looking for. With the new profile, the printing time for this wing part was two hours shorter than the old one. The conclusions from all this? It highly depends on the print if you can save time by pumping up print speed or just destroy the quality. Also, you absolutely need to double check the calibration and outcome with higher speeds. Another good way could be to just use a bigger nozzle and bigger layers like I did creating my longboard 0.6 design. To bring your printer to the absolute maximum without changing hardware, you need to change the machine limits like acceleration. But this also has a big effect on lifetime of the printer, so this was not an option for me. The new high-speed printers like Bamboo Labs models or the Prusa MK4 are of course very interesting though. I hope you like this small documentation. Hope to see you soon here on our channel. Don't forget to subscribe and like always, guten Flug!